I have a Pfizer document here from their own website. It you says. Yep, I can do that. Gene therapies are a delicate <coughs> and inten uh, intentional process encapsulating the desired desire gene. Uh, manufacturing gene therapies is challenging uh, and it requires certain steps, including transfection. That is on Pfizer's own website. I'm happy to table that. Uh, actually, I've just got to read one other thing, sorry. And then I have also from the website of the American Society of Gene and Cell Therapy, because the vaccine, it's referring to the uh, COVID uh, mRNA vaccine, introduces new genetic material into cells for a short period of time to induce antibodies. It is a gene therapy as defined by the American Society of Gene and Cell Therapy. Uh, and then the TGA's own uh, Pfizer non-clinical report, page 19, says the proposed commercial scale manufacturing process includes use of linear, linearised plasma DNA template for mRNA production. So we've now got Pfizer themselves who admit that the mRNA vaccines were gene therapy. The American Society of Gene and Cell Therapy admits, admits the mRNA vaccines are gene therapy. And we've got the TGA themselves admit the DNA was used in the manufacturing process. Why wasn't the actual mRNA vaccine tested for genotoxicity? And why didn't the uh, Office of Genetic uh, OTGR Therapeutics uh, look at it in terms of a gene technology? Um, Dr. Raj Bula, Gene Technology Regulator. Thank you for your question, Senator. I think the first part about the genotoxicity, that question has been asked before because the Therapeutic Goods Administration was the approving authority for the vaccine products. That is a question for TGA on genotoxicity. In relation to your question around manufacturing, I think it's useful to put a bit of context around that in that um, the committee is aware the mRNA COVID-19 vaccines were fully formulated and imported into Australia, which meant that there was actually no manufacture of the mRNA or the vaccine product itself here in Australia. Um, if indeed the mRNA was being manufactured here, and it's correct that gene technology was used in the modification of the mRNA, then under the Gene Technology Act, an approval would have been required for that manufacturing step. Oh, well, that contradicts what you've said previously. You've said previously no. gene therapy and gene technology wasn't used. Now you're saying because it was produced in another country that you're not responsible for checking uh, the gene therapy. So the Gene Technology Act gene technology. Doesn't, doesn't reach into manufacturing in other countries? But it still involves transfection here. It goes in. It transfects cells of Australian citizens. No, I disagree with that. Well, that's what Pfizer say. Even they admit transfection is a part of gene therapy. No, Senator. So you're you're disagreeing with Pfizer, the people who actually made the vaccine, that transfection isn't a part of gene therapy. I think she's disagreeing with you at the moment. Well, it's not my Senator words. I've just read out what Pfizer said. Welcome to my world. I think it comes down to a definition of what is a gene therapy. Yep, that's right. And I'm, I'm relying on the manufacturer. But anyway, that's all. Now, I note that obviously the COVID vaccines had gene technology in them. Uh, what uh, role did the Office of Gene Technology play in reviewing the safety of those vaccines? Uh, we don't actually review the safety or the efficacy of any therapeutic product. That's the role of the Therapeutic Goods Administration. So our, our role in terms of the risk assessment is limited to just looking at the containment of the genetically modified organism, you know, with most of the vaccines being um, an AAV, a virus, within the vaccine. We look at the people that are working and administering the vaccine. We look at how it's, if it's imported, the author authorizations for import, storage, transport, and disposal. So our role in terms of the assessment is fairly limited to just looking at the environmental risks and making sure that the GMO is being handled correctly through all the stages up to administration and to a patient. Authorised G. Rennick, LMP Chermside.